What's up? I'm Jay Moss and today I want to talk about getting your stereo image right. Um, it's more than just panning things. When we're in a mastering situation, uh, which I often am, getting your stereo image right is kind of an underappreciated part of mixing sometimes and also mastering. I'm going to show you a couple super subtle tricks you can do, how to apply them to any mix, and how to get your stereo image sounding just how you want it to. So here we go. So one of the first things I do is I look at the low end and I kind of want to figure out where do the kick drum and the bass guitar live and then when do we start to move into other instruments in the low end. A really easy way to do that is to make a low shelf and an EQ like FabFilter or any other analyzer and then just listen. So we're going to make a point here on FabFilter. We're going to make a low shelf. We're going to use this headphone icon. We're going to click it and then we're going to sweep through until we figure out exactly where we want to put this. Okay, so that's around 70 hertz. What's in there? I've got the kick drum, I've got some bass guitar, and I have the bottom of the snare. All of those things I like to keep in the center of the mix anyway, so I'm happy to have all of that. Once I started hearing too much of the low parts of the guitars and that type of stuff, I started back down, so I don't want that stuff. I just wanna know what frequency and below has that content that I wanna put in the center. Now that I know what that frequency is, I'm gonna open up a Mono Maker plugin. I like this one called Control from Brainworks. We're gonna pop that open, and it's really easy. It's one knob. Okay, as advertised, one knob. So we can turn this up to 70 here, or we can just double click, type in 70, boom. That's gonna create a nice foundation in my low end, keep all the things that should be centered and mono in the middle, being powerful where I like them. You might notice right next to Mono Maker something called Stereo Width. I'm gonna overdo this knob so you can kinda of hear what it does. Okay, did you hear how the guitars got really wide? It got really phasing, kind of unpleasant sounding. And the correlation meter, which is right below that stereo width knob, started to go into the red pretty deeply. You don't want to do that. But there is a way to widen your highs. I'm going to show you a different trick I like for that. Okay, so just like in FabFilter where I was looking for low frequencies, here I'm going to look for high frequencies in this Ozone Imager plugin. I click up here to create a point. I click solo, so I just hear the high frequencies. And then this slider right here is more stereo, less stereo. So I'm gonna push this all the way up so we can really hear it. This is soloed, and just like I did with the low frequencies, I'm gonna slide this down until I hear what I want. Now I can check my phase correlation here back on the Brainworks control. Correlation still really good. Now I might be able to do just a nudge of a total stereo width push. This last trick I do, I only do a little, little bit. It's kind of frowned upon by some people, but I think if you add just a dab in the right mix and your client's cool with it, it's cool. I'm actually gonna add reverb to the entire mix. It's gonna be a room reverb. It should just help it kind of like pull back just a little bit. Mind you, these are all tiny little changes that kind of add up to make a better product. I'm gonna do like five, six percent. Okay, that might be hard to hear. I hope you have headphones on. I hope you can really hear it. You should hear the mix sort of pull back a little bit and feel like you're more in a place ever so slightly. I wouldn't do this all the time. This is not standard practice, anything like that. It's just in certain situations, I'm not afraid to use a little reverb in places where the internet and message boards would probably tell you like, ah, don't do that. <laughs> okay, and with that, I'm gonna turn these off and then turn them on and you'll be able to hear the subtle differences that I think are very important. This has been just a little quick tip I thought I'd put on the internet. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Try it in your mixes, it's pretty cool. I am Jay Moss, I hope you learned something. Until next time, adios, drink polar.